Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I am your host, Matorius. This is part one of the 1755 live stream by Owen Benjamin, I do believe. And this... I don't know how this is going to translate. I do want to... The reason why the screen looks this way is because I want to address the name of this. It is 1755. It is eight days ago. I'm trying my best to ke to keep catch up as quickly as possible. Um, Owen Benjamin, number 1755, Rollerblades on the Ground, special report live from Hawaii. I want to talk about the title of this because one of the things that he does is he says, pay the gay away, right? That's how he, that's part of his religion. Uh, he compares it to the Catholic Church of being able to pay your sins away. Rollerblading is another form of, uh, uh, well, it's not another form, but it's a term for homosexuality. And so he's participating in, uh, it's such a weird thing to, to, to say rollerblades gay, condemn them, and then say that this is a thing that, I don't know. I, it might be a part of his humor, maybe, because he does still claim to be a comedian. Maui Fire thing, there's so much going on with it that I just want to get someone who lives in Hawaii on the stream to uh, discuss what's happening. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to have bad outs. Let's, let's crush. So uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. So what's going on in Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it's. <laughs> So the initial what's being told, obviously, like you hear about um, Lahaina burning in flames and, you know, immediately none of it was making sense to the majority of the people. So you have to understand, like, the majority of the, the locals are seeing right through it. Like, I talk to a lot of locals and they're like, this is bullshit. Nothing about this is, is genuine. And we, we can go into all of that. But, you know, you never want to just go guns blazing, no pun intended, on social media. Just yeah. because, people, you know, like you said, in all the times, you could you know, explain it nine ways to Sunday, but people are like, you don't care. It's like, that's not it, dude. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I, I saw all the GoFundMes popping up and people making claims that didn't jive with my uh, knowledge of uh, of the world. Like, oh, they're not paying out insurance. I'm like, it's been one day. Like, did they, did they, how did they get that, you know, that quickly? And uh, and then, you know, it's like, oh, uh, Oprah's house didn't burn. Obama's house didn't burn. I'm like, right. dude, 99.7% didn't burn on that island. I'm like, eh, this feels a little sketchy. And so I started talking to a wild med bear about directed energy weapons and he has... <coughs> Shut up, dude. Shut your mouth, Owen. You've re you've said all of this a thousand times before. You finally have somebody. Is he from Hawaii? We don't know. Not right now because it started weird. <laughs> like, shut, shut up, dude. Shut your mouth. <laughs> he needs a handler. He needs somebody that's there. It's like, dude, shut up. <laughs> shut your mouth and let the dude talk. Uh, opinions on it that like spot fires do happen he is a wildfire uh firefighter and i posted his his stuff on there and um and uh and people are like oh yeah so you work with the new world order and so i talked to you and what sounds the most sketchy to me shut up they're barricading like the entrances but how many people yeah. are barricading that's why i want to know why, why why don't they why doesn't the herd stampede you know well i think that's a, to your point it's that most people are trying to do this peaceful way they're trying to get peaceful and there's that you know tipping of the scale where it's going to get to a point where they're gonna, it's going to become savagery right people are going to be desperate right and ultimately as you said who's then going to come to maui or to the islands to travel. It's going to be a lot. I'll skip around. That's the problem with skipping around. You get things out of context, whatever. One of the things that the herd, the herd need to understand is that if you wait too long, it, you're too weak, too thirsty, too tired, too exhausted to actually do anything of any kinds of, con of any kind of consequence. So if you wait, if you wait because you want to be peaceful, no, nah, you, you got to be organized and you have to know when to strike. Less, which is going to take it even more and it's going to cause a lot of fighting but to your point about you know sin and things like that not that everybody who was affected is in sin but it's accepting the tickets makes it a lot harder than to you know stand the ground without having to be forceful unfortunately because these people the way it's the, the, the topography of it is they have nowhere else to go they can't unless they get on a boat and start to travel with the people trying to drop stuff off it's like they're being blocked and for those who can't travel in and out it's becoming it's super backed up there's constant just miles upon miles of, of cars and from people i know that were there they were allowing during all this tourists to bypass into the hotels that are still standing and that was that's a fact we know for a 100 fact at the hotel we were at on oahu the second day we were there we had a mass surge of people coming and my my mother-in-law knows everybody so she was talking to the we were talking to the staff and they're like oh yeah we saw a 20 percent increase because of what happened in maui and we got a bunch of people trying to get refunds we got people like bickering and complaining like i want my money back but i want to stay here but i want my money back so like they're seeing like 
trying to deal with that whole, you know, PR and, uh, you know, human HR type of situation where it's like, you know, if, if this keeps going, are people going to be coming there? If not, then yeah, dude, they're going to see a huge drop off on regards to you know, tourism. Do you think the death toll is uh, what they're claiming? Do you know anyone who's died? I don't know any. No, I don't know. So that, that's the thing that's tough. I don't know anyone who's actually died. I mean, I've only seen what's in the videos of like someone in the street, but I can't confirm any of that. I yeah. do. I know for a fact a lot of people I know personally lost their homes, lost everything, and they're not the wealthy, rich type people. So that I do know for a fact. That is a real thing. But they were now, homeowners in Lahaina, they, so they were a lot richer than me. You know, some of them were. Yeah, some of them had money, but then some of them just had. The land. I don't have a hatred towards rich people. I, I feel like if somebody, if a rich guy loses their house and it was generational, I don't think that's any. Any better, like, but I just, see, I was just looking on Twitter and it was just, it made it seem like it was this, these like huddled masses. And I'm just like, there probably is that. Now that I talked to you about it, if they did have those like houses with a ton of people in them and they just wouldn't sell uh, yeah. and they were like grandfathered in and they almost probably had a bit of a, uh, like a, uh, what's it called? A uh, reservation type feel to it. Mm-hmm. For someone who says must be nice the way he does in his mocking, condescending way when somebody's having a conversation with him, it came so easy and rolled off the tongue so easily and so quickly whenever the guy said there wasn't rich people, it was just homeowners. His immediate response was, well, they're richer than me. Must be nice. He is what he claims not to be. He points the finger and says, you are what I am. And I'm almost I'm almost to the point to where it's it's 100 percent of everything that he accuses everybody else to be, because that's one of those tactics. The only reason why they're calling me that is because I called them that first. People literally next door to us, it's a rental house. It's got like three bedrooms. It's pretty small. There's eight people in the house. It's a three bedroom. There's, eight, there's confirmed eight people. I talk to them all the time. Yeah. So, and that's just one house. And we see it's everywhere. You, you have a, a lot of these places. You have the, what's called an Ohana suite, which is just like a, your grandparents, uh, mother in laws, father in laws, people who family who will live there. Are one of our really good friends. Their parents, uh, uh, the, fa- the mother, and father own like a nice house on the beach. But it's a huge house. But there's like 20 people in the house. It's like I mean they did well for themselves. The parents did, but they bought it off early on in like the 70s. But ultimately, there's 20 people in this house. So there's a lot of these places where multiple people are living there. And so. When that all comes to, uh, you know, this chaos, then that ensues in the way things were handled. A lot of it is very true. There was no sirens. People that I know there were like, hey, I'm trying to use my water to try to let out some of the fire that's coming or redirect it. But there was like no water. And they were like, oh, we just happened to shut it down. It was dry. Well, the timing of that obviously is very concerning. But I also know from people that were there, they had family and loved ones trying to go to, again, along the road that would get them out. And there was cops and people saying, hey, there's down power lines. Go back. And they're like, what do you mean go back? Open up the other fucking road because there's another road that's abandoned. And one of the exits, it's like, here's the main road. And there's like a drop, like a, like an off point where you can take it, but it was closed off. One thing that's interesting about this whole situation, because I haven't looked into this at all, but in a day and age of this mass communication, there is still this much confusion about the reality and truth of a situation blows my mind. It is so bizarre, so crazy that there can still be so much confusion. We're letting people go there. So there's this like, and again, you know, they're trying to kill people. I think what they're trying to do is, is they're trying to keep people hurdled or uh, cattled in, man. I really do believe it because the people that were there, they're like, dude, we felt like we had nowhere to go. And so for what that's worth, I don't know what everyone did in those situations, but people, some people were able to get out. Some people uh, kind of stayed and tried to find. I think there's a possibility that this is somewhat of an, of an, of an experiment to see how information uh, travels, to see how people are going to react whenever they are, um, forced to, to to do things and to go places that they don't want to go spots where they can be safe uh, but yeah dude it's it's that, that did happen that was all very real um you know i have a theory that you know with the again arsonists and things like that the way they were telling us where the, the, the fire happened is, is complete bullshit there's no possible way it jumped the entire island well it was the wind and the embers the amount of embers the amount of that it traveled to create that much fire is literally impossible there's you know no way in chance of help but when you look at these smart meters when you look at i don't know it- I, tr- you try to stay away from the word impossible whenever you're talking about fires. There are circumstances to where it is impossible, but fire does crazy things and very unpredictable. Uh, these you know, electric cars, those will overheat and start fire if it gets super hot. So yeah, you yeah, get, totally. Just a theory. You get an arsonist who starts spraying in dry area, of course. They'll blow up. Of <laughs> course. And you get massive winds that are coming. Now, those winds were coming from where the fire was to where Lahaina is. The winds were actually technically coming from the north or like the northeast to then hit Lahaina, which means where the hurricane was was in the southwest. So that means the wind should be going this way. 
the fire was going this way because if it was coming from where the hurricane was it's going from the ocean to the shore so where's the fire you know i mean the fire had to come from where the land is which is the northeast of and it was coming in that direction so that's literally right there so anyway this uh, episode of under the dome yeah dick whipping is super weird don't like it yeah and guys i will never give up my autonomy where i say i've had such a powerful religious experience where i will submit my will and i will quit my kids fucking dicks off no and uh, then you're not going to heaven on a reproach where you're like okay you definitely are a good person like you're a good smart person you're definitely not lying we trust you you're smart you have a method i literally understand that i understand that you have to make some hard decisions sometimes but the people making these decisions are fucking retarded and they're always wrong okay uh, do we remove the wheelchair ramp to the saloon haven't seen paraplegic wheeling around here in a while i hear he's dead i mean didn't he just wheel himself off a cliff with complete despair I've never heard the cancer theory. Well, I was taught in school, literally in middle school, that the rate of AIDS, I even remember the fucking numbers because I remember getting scared because I had an unclipped dick. That if, like, if a circumcised man had sex with someone, had vaginal sex with someone with AIDS in Africa, think about how many lies are, are in this one statement. It was nine in 1,000 that he would get AIDS. But if an uncircumcised man had sex with, had vaginal sex with a woman with AIDS, it was like 150 or something out of 1,000. I remember being like, oh, shit. Because I used to be terrified of AIDS when I was like 10 because of the like public schools are so fucking insane. And so I remember. It, <laughs> is that true? Not not what he's saying. Is it true? But was that a was that a, a thing that was said? Because I remember the AIDS, AIDS hysteria, the HIV hysteria from the 80s and 90s. I don't remember hearing anything about uncircumcised compared to circumcised. But then again, I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't in Oswego, <laughs> you know, like, or wherever he was. That was the one time in my life I really wanted to clip dick because I was like, and it was all just Jewish idiot psychopathic paid endorsement. Brandon isn't cheap. No, I literally pushed him to have kids and get cherry trees. Uh, so what do I protect? This is what this is. Uh, this is my house built on nigger jokes. Nope. Okay, no, no. A great man once said, "Work built on someone else's jokes." <laughs> so it's. I mean, how pathetic is that? How pathetic is it that first of all you cling on to such a word for so long? I've already said this. I understand the uh, the um, attractiveness to saying things that you're told not to say. I get that. I understand that. There's a certain maturity level to that. Sense of humor, whatever. But to build your house on those jokes whenever you stole the main joke from somebody else. That is insane, man. That is crazy. We'll set you free. That's a much uh, better statement. There is something astoundingly pathetic to that. It is crazy. Okay. It's a damn shame what this world's gotten to. That victim consciousness. That's a shit line. For people like me and people like you. What do you mean people like me? You don't lump me into your victim-y, drunk, despair-oriented, fucking ginger faggot face. Wish I could just wake up and it... He is such a victim whenever he wants to be a victim, but then there is so much hostility when somebody tries to say that he's kind of, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense, but it's by design because of his antichrist Luciferian uh, philosophy of confusion. Confusion is not of the Lord. Confusion is of the evil one. And, he preaches confusion. There is no sensibility of, of logic or any kind of uh, normality of thought, morally, ethically, whatever, in Owen Benjamin's words. Not be true. Well, maybe you should kill yourself then. How's that sound? But it is. Oh. Oh, it is living in the new world with an old soul. These rich men north of Richmond, which is uh, what's that? Washington, D.C. Lord knows they all just want to have total control. Want to know what you think? Want to know what you do? 
and they don't. Oh, so there's a song that's been going around that I have not heard except for the first couple of lines. I have intentionally put it off listening to it because <clears throat> just because I used to be heavy into music and, um, And so I have not listened to this song yet. And so he is reading this is that's what I think. I don't even know if I've listened to the first I mean I've had to have listened to the first verse. New world with an old soul. These rich men north of Richmond, which is uh what's that? Washington DC. Okay, so I don't know. That's the name of the song though. Something like Richmond North of uh, Richmond North of Richmond or something is the name of the song. Knows they all just want to have total control. Want to know what you think, want to know what you do, and they don't think you know what I know that you do cuz your dollar ain't shit and it's taxed to no end cuz of rich men north of Richmond. Well, maybe you should be controlled, Oliver. Maybe you should. I don't want I, I'm glad the rich men north of Richmond control you, you fuck. <laughs> It's like, so you're not grateful for your life. You think working hard is selling your soul. You think that drinking is acceptable to put in your little song. All right? And that, and that someone has the ability of taking control over you. This is eugenics. I wish politicians would look out for minors and not just minors on an island somewhere. Lord, we got folks in the streets, ain't got nothing to eat, and the obese milk and welfare. I mean, I wish politicians would look out for minors and not just minors on an island somewhere. Lord, we got folks in this. Why don't you look out for your minors? Let's see if he even has any kids. What do you guys want to bet? Oliver Anthony family. Uh, why is it? Uh this is, he's such a pathetic excuse for a grown man. What he's doing right now, I, 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 this is my hypothesis for why he talks so much crap about things that are getting traction. Besides the fact of if this is tra if this is getting traction, not talk crap, then I'll be I'll I'll be sucked into the to the uh, snowball that's rolling down the hill. What I'm thinking besides that is that he is trying to present himself as a roast comic, and so he's hoping one of these days he's going to talk crap to somebody, and they won't just ignore him. They'll call him out, maybe have a little beef, but then, oh, we're buddies, that, that kind of thing. That way he can milk their fans. A politician that you hate. So he's making a claim that there are these rich men north of Richmond who force this evil shit on him, but yet they're responsible for minors. Oliver Anthony family. Where's Oliver Anthony born? Farmville, Virginia. Oh, dude, this is a total op. Uh, everything you need to know. Does he have a family? How many kids does he have? This is a total op. So I'm okay. So he's an op. This dude is an op. It, it, <laughs> Owen, Owen, the name, the, the, the claim to fame for Owen is a song called the blank stole my bike who he stole that from something else from somebody else. Pathetic excuse for a human being, not to mention a, a grown man. At the age of 30, he burst into the limelight with his viral hit song, Rich Man North Virginia. The fact it's covered by all these media outlets. I mean, think about how many things we've had go viral that no one ever covers because because they don't want to. OK, uh, poignant political message and emotional depth. Uh, he was 30 whenever he had a song that went viral. Unlike Owen Benjamin. It, That, that comparison that I made earlier sticks, still sticks. So, hey, man, yeah, my, my, my buddy stopped inviting me over for dinner. <clears throat> Why'd your buddy stop inviting you over for dinner? Well, I took a shit on his table. I flat out hopped up there, dropped trout, and took a dump right in the middle of his kitchen, his, his, di his dining room table. Uh you did that and they won't invite you back over? No, they stopped talking to me. They they don't want nothing to do with me. Well, it's it's their fault, man. It's not your fault for taking a crap on, on their dining room table. That's uh, that's what he does. He craps on everything, taints it with his poisonous, venomous, <clears throat> disgusting existence. Which that might be too harsh. And then complains that nobody wants to play with him in the playground. 
<laughs> Think about how many things that we've done that's gone vi- that's gone viral, and they won't cover it. Yeah, because you're a dangerous predatorial cult. That's why. That's insane. Alvarante falls within the age range of 30 to 40, embodying a sense of seasoned artistry and experience. He maintains an air of mystery around his personal life. Oh, I bet he does. I bet he's a fucking agent. Alvarante's artistic dedication takes center stage, so no one even knows if he uh, has a family. The age milestone underscores the depths of maturity. Dude, this is such a fucking little... All right, factory worker to a rising country music sensation. Uh, I'm not buying it at all. Where's his Instagram page? His hit single catapulted him to the spotlight. Oliver's musical prowess lies in... Where's his Instagram page? Says the dude that says, live off the grid. <laughs> Be a homesteader. <laughs> you can you can literally... You can literally get a guitar, get a four track, record a song, put it out, and if people like it, it'll go viral and nobody will know who you are. That can happen. Where's his Instagram page? Oh, he's definitely an op because nobody knows anything about him. <laughs> Y'all know how we, you know that, that we're good is because we go viral all the time, but they won't cover us. It's not because we've been around for six years and, and people have tasted of this poisonous water, this contaminated well. We haven't been around long enough to prove who we are or what we are, what we stand for. And people have tested the spirit and decided, nope, that's not for me. So no, so his age is 30. <coughs> He's from Farmville. He's a male Caucasian. Uh, that's it. Like there's no information. So he has no, he has no fucking, uh, Instagram or anything? No one knows who he is? No, dude, this is totally a, a, an op. All right, I got to read I gotta read some mail. That's- the fact that anybody's sitting here listening to this and they're like, no, I agree with you, he's totally an op. Like, what kind of... What? That makes me feel like he is. He's paid opposition. Just because of how much he just throws that out there. With no information, what literally no information. Oh, we can't find any information on, on him on this dude that just recently went viral. So embarrassingly stupid. So that's how eugenics works, by the way. They get you to choose it. So if you listen to that song, you're like, yeah, when I work, I sell my soul. That's why I have to drink alcohol until I'm broken. Oh, those rich men north, they're, they're in charge of my kids. Why won't they help me? No wiki early life age. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, you go to my Wikipedia. It's like, oh, and Benjamin once uttered the phrase, Jews are sneaky. Meanwhile, we don't even know anything about a guy who has, like, everyone is talking about his fucking song now. All right, I got a tip uh, from Carrie. Thank you. I'm- such a jealous, such a jealous child Owen is. That is ridiculous. Everybody's talking about him, and they're not talking about me. Gee, golly, Willikers. <laughs> Till we die. Nope. 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 By the way, I got gook money. Look at this. Oh, 100 Hong Kong. Hello. Hello. Have, do you want to eat dog? Oh, I would love to eat the dog. Do you want to eat a gook? But, oh. And I wonder why no one talks about Owen Benjamin. <laughs> I wonder why no media outlet will talk about Owen Benjamin. I wonder why. Doesn't make any sense oh, to me. I, I am a delicate. It was ideal. Dave then jokes we should be careful. We might be giving them ideas. Well, only a few months later, Costco. Re- and he's a fool. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, if you're mad about the song I just made fun of, you've only known about it for one week because Ben Shapiro told you about it because they want you to drink yourself to death. All right. Jesus Christ. I hope that was a good talk we had about. Uh, oh, so that's why he that's why he uh, talked crap about us because Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. I hate, <laughs> I hate, I hate the fact that I can't pronounce names or words sometimes because of this buffoon, Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro. That's his name, Ben Shapiro. All right, so uh, yeah, let's about uh, eugenics. Circumcised people matter. Jack, about no one cares about your deformed dick. Jesus, you and Mr. Miggles. 
It's the reason your woman left you. It was because of your clipped dick. He smiles a little too much whenever he's able to talk about his his uh, cult members' genitalias. Genit- genitalias. Genitals. Just kidding. I mean, people make fun of unclipped dicks all the time. It's about my turn to, it's about my time to really, really dig into people, really make them feel the pain. Um, yeah, I love, I love that I fucking make fun of people. Dude, why you wash your dick? Just cut off the foreskin. <laughs> They're so gross. Yeah, Jacko Bad's woman left him because... Oh maybe, my goodness, man. Why are we in the hood? Because we kept our hood. Oh, I thought, I thought it was... Let's see how he ended it. Conquistador battle helmets. Totally, dude. Like, just out of place, scared, you know, unprepared for the weather. Uh, you know, when Dirty Dave, like, let's say Dirty Dave kills a bunch of guys. And then he's like, I need to get at their bodies. And everyone's like, why, Dirty Dave? What do you, what do you need? You want a trophy of some guy? He's like, yeah. It's like, what, like a finger in here? No. It's like, Jesus, dude. How, how much do you want to impress this king? You want to impress King Solomon. You don't want him to think you're a faggot. He, they'd have to take his dead. Oh, shit. You got to do your fucking... Okay, so he ended it with <laughs> verbal pornography. Who would have thought? This is the Texas Goat Radio Show. I apologize for being loud and obnoxious. I'm your host, Notorious. As always, till next time.